Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today I got news and this is actually one of those ones that I've actually done news about but today it has to do with the release of this tool and I'm talking about no other tool than the Maxon Cinema 4D R21. So R21 is now available for you to go ahead and download it and use it. It's now available for public use so just in case you want to get your hands here, you can come over to this link, which is going to be in the description, maxon.net slash try, and you can download the 14 day trial version and you can use it for whatever you want. Now, the other time we went ahead and we talked about, you know, the announcements of these two and a couple of features that it was going to come up with. And I told you guys that once it comes out, I'm also going to let you guys know and I might probably do a simple walkthrough around this too. Now, if you don't know, Maxon Cinema 4D actually comes in several flavors before, but right now they've gone ahead and compressed all of these things together and it is now one simple tool. So if you want to buy this tool right now, you can go ahead and get it for an annual rental for, you know, the price that is here. Or, you know, you can actually get it for a monthly rental. And we also talked about something that has to do with the tool coming with Redshift. So if you want to get the one that comes with Redshift, it has a certain price that is attached to this. And I actually think this is a better way for the guys at Maxon to move compared to the fact that, you know, they were having this tool the way it was before that basically had to do with you buying those variants and using just a partial part of cinema 4d so moving on this is the brand new cinema 4d so once you open up cinema 4d r21 this is exactly what you're going to get we might not actually deal with a whole lot of things maybe we're going to create a whole new video that will talk about those things but i'll just go ahead and show you guys a couple of you know stuffs that you need to know that exist here and it might not be way more than three but if you guys want me to do a much more extensive video about the new features and how you can work with the new features, put that in the comment section and I will come through for you guys. So we're going to look at a simple comparison between the new and the old one. So I actually have the R19 here and this is R21. So R21 welcomes you with this beautiful, you know, beautiful stuff that you can take and actually learn a couple of things, see a couple of tips, go to the sign vesti, and also, you know, you can come through and check out some brand new stuff that you've been working on. I think almost every company is going with this quick start dialogue and I guess it kind of makes sense. So you can close this and by default, you can see that the UI looks very, very clean. Compared to the UI, which we had before, you can actually see that this UI looks kind of clean and i like the fact that they've gone ahead and played with the font type a little bit like right now you can see how project setting stays here compared to what we had here and you can also see that all of the uh, icons now looks a bit more refreshed i think they actually refresh this thing for the sakes of 4k screens i guess and they look quite quite clean and so one of the first things you would also notice if you've been using cinema 4d for a while is that right here you can now see something called the default camera this by default wasn't there before but now you can see that and if you look down here in the timeline you can now see a brand new key that exists there so there's just a tiny bit of stuff just uh you know a tiny bit of stuff that they just put here and there now you remember from the video which we talked about before that there is also a new force field and you can find that there and also a volume builder that also exists here we might actually talk about these ones in a different video but there's something that really is cool that i would like to show you guys so you remember the bevel tool which we talked about before yes so the bevel is one of the cool things that they've actually implemented in this one so i'm just going to go ahead and show you guys how this bevel actually works so if i come through and let's say i click here and just go ahead and let's throw in a cogwheel something like that it already has bevels and if you hold down alt on your keyboard and click you can actually have the extrude there and you can go ahead and extrude this thing as much as you want now with this extrude here by default when you're using a text you might also see that you have things called caps so you have the start cap and also the end cap so if you look at this by default it looks like the very default stuff that you have 
you know you can go over to steps and you can create as much as you want and you can also use curves to create you know interesting curves depending on what you want to create but what we're looking at is presets so now you can load up different presets of you know bevels and you can take a very lovely look at them so these bevels are actually curves that has been saved for later use so you can also create yours and also keep them for later use so i actually think that if you want to make or you want to push your more graph design to a different level or if you're working with hard surfaces probably this is going to be a huge one for you so this is one of the cool things that these guys have actually implemented that i love and i would like to see what you guys can actually go ahead and create by actually using this tool as it stands now this doesn't just end here you can also see that the same bevel system that they have also spirals all the way to the text tool so the text tool is also another amazing one that you guys need to see so for the text tool how you can get this to work is exactly the same so what you need to do is just simply go over to where is that again MoGraph get the you know the mo text and then you can choose to change the font type then from there you can go ahead and you know play with the cap so for example if i would like to change this from regular to something more and let's say i choose to make it bold now if i go over to this part where i have code caps i can also come through and load the presets as much as i want now if you're wondering how you can also go ahead and make your own presets all you have to do is just set this thing back to round come over to curves and if you just come through and choose to hold down control and click you will be able to add curves that you can control so if you want to add curves that you can control you can just do that all by doing this and you can see that it has a bezier handles that you can also go ahead and play with so depending on what you want to create this is much more of an endless uh, possibility for the curves that you would like to make and there's also another thing that you guys need to note once you are looking at the brand new version of cinema 4 r 21 almost everything that has this shade simply means that it is a new stuff all okay? right so everything that has this shade simply means that it is brand new and it is only existing directly here in Cinema 4D R21. Moving on, let's talk about the nodal shade. Moving on, let's talk about the nodal editor. So you guys might have probably heard that there is now a brand new nodal editor that exists in Cinema 4D. So how you get to actually work with that is quite simple. So if I go over to this section called window, you might see that we have this one set to gray. This is not your material editor. All right, so I'm just going to drag this down. So because we don't have any material here, you don't get to see it. That is not your material editor and it is not your material manager, all right? This brand new tool is actually called your nodal editor. So the nodal editor is what you can use to actually edit your, is what you can use to actually edit your materials on the go. Previously, this did not exist, all right? So in the previous version, you don't get to see it. And the tools that were able to have things like that were Redshift, Octane, and so on and so forth. So it's very, very interesting to actually find out that right now you have that particular, you know, thing directly here. And before we actually talk about that, it's also good to see that we have all of these extensions. And I guess we covered a couple of them in the updates section of our videos so you can go ahead and check some of the updates out in case you missed any of these ones and let's just dive right into this one so if i click on this which is the node editor and let me go ahead and bring it all the way down i can come through i can choose to use create from this section and create a node material and just you know let's just create one of them like this or and you can also notice that the material is more physical you can see that it says node space 
you know, standard slash physical, and you can change it to pro render or maybe any other render that you have directly there. So if I go ahead and expand this and just zoom all the way in, you can see that I have this object that is here. Or you can see that I have this material that it is a granite material and some of the stuff has automatically been fixed for us here. So how do you create a brand new empty one? How you make an empty one is come over to create and create a new nodal material. So you can do that directly here. By default, this is the main material and this is just the diffuse. Use. All right. So if you want to understand more about how these things work, we already covered a video introduction to Hypershade and it is a basic introduction to how you can work with textures and shaders directly in Maya. But that same idea applies through every other node based you know, material or texturing program. So you can connect this. So this is the principal BSDF and this is your diffuse material, which simply means that you can at any point in time, go ahead and change this. So you can choose to, you know, switch it from diffuse to funk to, you know, uh, GGX, whatever you want. Now, how do you play with textures here? You can go ahead and literally bring textures that exist on your hard drive directly in here. But if you want to play with assets that already exist inside here, you can find them here. So the assets that you would like to work with, you can find them here. You can see the 2D assets here. You can see the surfacing assets here. I think from here you can get to see things that has to do with emission, the basic materials, you know, normal maps and all that, that stuff. You can also find shapes here. You can also find normal materials that you can play with. And at the same time, you can find generators. Now, those generators are things that you can use to actually give some sort of, you know, organic feel and you can use them to drive certain stuffs on your model or on your you know your surface or on the materials that you're working with so if i pick up this you know this very basic noise right here you can see that this basic noise has a much more you know defined set of attributes that you can use to play with it so i can go ahead and change this type to maybe dense and you can see that updates real time there i can change this to over and i can also change this to maybe any of them i think i should go back to let's actually select box so with this here i can select the results that i have and connect these results over to color and at any point in time, I can always switch this. Let's go back to Oba. I can always switch this and use this for whatever thing that I want. Now, within this point that you're working with this, if you have several stuffs that are connected to several places, you can choose to solo those ones out and you can choose to just, you know, work on one particular point at a given time so if you guys want me to talk more about textures or how you can work with the nodal editor please put it in the comment section and I will definitely come through for you guys. And I think this is going to be about my time. There is also a couple of things that has also been added to these two things like the volume measure and also, you know, the Mixamo rig. And for sure, the Mixamo rig is actually because I was uncertain the, earlier, the, the first time. But right now, I'm quite certain that the Mixamo rig is actually something that comes with the brand new stuff. So it is actually something that exists as it is. Because if we come through, create a character, you can switch here and you can get this as a brand new rig. Initially, I wasn't so sure if it was a rig or if it was a script, but right now I am dead sure that this is actually a rig that is coming and that exists directly here in Cinema 4D. So if you guys want me to cover all of these things and you know share a couple of stuffs with you guys, please put them in the comment section. Tell me what you guys want me to talk about and I would like to come through and show you guys how to do a couple of things here in Cinema 4D. And just before we go, it's also cool to note that, you know, right now Cinema 4D also has an Uber shader. An Uber shader or should I say um, a principal shader or a principal material as it stands. So you can see that we have this one right here. So if you come over here and click on material, you will be able to find, yeah, an Uber material. So with this Uber material, you can go in and you can plug your displacement, you can plug your normal map, your bump, opacity, you know, transparency, emission, coating, all of that stuff. But if you want to go ahead and, you know, recreate your own, you can come through, pick up the pieces from this section 
and you can also use that to create what you want so it's totally dependent on you and it's also totally dependent on what you're actually going for at the end of the day so tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section if you like this video you know what to do go ahead and hit the like button and also turn on notification and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace